On this session of Intrigue Teaches, we are talking about hat boxes, rose-filled hat boxes to be exact. I have pulled some of the coolest boxes. They come in this trio of three different sizes and they all nest. So when they come chipped to you, they're all nested together, which makes a really great, easy storage. And look at how nice and deep and solid they are, really beautiful. And I opted for this great gray color because I wanted to pair these gray boxes with these beautiful lavender roses from Jet Fresh. These are spectacular. The variety is Silver Light, and they come, I believe they're an Ecuador grower. Yes, absolutely, Ecuador says right on the packaging. What I really loved about these Jet Fresh roses is how they ship them. This right here is really spectacular. This is called Arrive Alive, and their roses ship in hydration. That means from the time they leave the farm in Ecuador till the time they get into your studio, into your design table, they have hydration the entire way through. That right there is game changing. So we're gonna get these roses processed and start designing. I'm gonna show you how we create these very simple boxes. And it's easier than you may think. They are cardboard, so we wanna make sure we're lining them properly. And in order to line them, I'm gonna use some of this great foil. It's got this waterproof surface on one side and a metallic surface on the other side. I'm sure if you've seen any traditional flower shops and you'll see that they do use this to line baskets and, and other containers. And we are gonna line this cool hat box with this fun paper. So I've gone ahead and got started just to help us out. Let me show you what it's gonna look like move our paper to the side. So I went ahead and I cut a piece of paper in the size I was gonna want. So I'm looking at the depth of my box and I wanna make sure the paper doesn't come out on the outside. I wanna keep all that paper inside so I can see the beauty of the box. So I went ahead and measured first before I cut. You know the old adage, measure twice, cut once? I don't always do that, I usually just measure once, but for today, we'll do it twice, just for you. I'm not good at following directions. All right, so the box itself, I'm, I'm designing right now on the smaller of the three hat boxes, and we're looking at about nine and a half inches. So I wanted to make sure I had double that in the paper I cut. So when I cut the paper, I made sure I cut to a little over 18 inches. That is gonna allow me to nest that paper into the box and get all that moisture right in there and not have it leak through to the beautiful cardboard box because cardboard and water are no fun together. Then we're gonna take our paper and I put it right on top and I just wanna make sure that it's gonna slide in and be centered. And I take a piece of foam. Now this here is a grande block that I have sliced in half. And then I took the grande block of foam and I just cut the edges down so that it would give me that circle. This, well, it's kind of a circle. It'll be in there, we won't see it in there. So this overly circly piece of foam is gonna go straight in. And remember, all that hydration is gonna get stuck in this paper liner, in this, this foil liner that we have. So I'm gonna place this on top and then very gently, I'm gonna press down very gently and slowly just let the paper sink down into the box. The reason I do this so gently is because if I push too hard, I'm going to dent the box and I don't wanna do that. I wanna keep that beautiful style intact. And I wanna make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. There we go. And then I'm gonna take the paper that's on the inside. So you can see we have our foam there that's already been soaked. If you were wondering, I pre-soaked that before we all got together. So the foam is already soaked full of water. And now I have this paper here and I'm gonna fold this in on itself so that it doesn't get in my way when we're adding those beautiful roses from Jet Fresh. All right, we're in great shape now. It's nice and flush against the side of the box. And now it is time to add our roses. And I'm gonna use my tape measure again when it comes to adding my roses. All right, let's get rid of the tools we don't need. So 
So we're all done with our foil, so I'm gonna move that to the side. And I'm all done with the Oasis knife because I cut that before you were here with me. Now I wanna make sure I take another quick measurement. Because I want these roses to be nice and flush on the top and not wonky all over the place, I want a clean, modern look. I'm gonna measure from the bottom of the foam till the top so I know how long, roughly, I'm gonna want my stems. So I'm gonna place this right. I'm gonna place the uh, tape measure right at the foam, if you can see that, and take it all the way to the edge, and it gives me a little over six inches. So I wanna make sure that I have that stem a little over six inches. Now I'm gonna place my first rose, and that is going to give me the guide. So once I get my first rose, I'm gonna follow all the way around to fill my space. I don't need any leaves on these, and I usually leave some leaves on when I'm processing because I'm not sure what I'm gonna want. But for this particular design, I know I want no leaves. Uh, these little babies can stay. I'm going to take my measure, look at six, maybe six and a half inches, and I'm gonna give it a cut. Now I usually only measure the first couple, and after I measure the first couple and get started, then I just continue to work. You get used to where your placement is going to be. So as I'm placing this in, I want it to be nice and flush. I'm realizing that at six and a half inches, it's not going into the foam quite as deep as I'd like it to be. I really want the rose to go all the way down to the foam. So I was thinking the head was gonna be a little bit longer, which means I'm gonna go a little bit longer on my next cut. So instead of six and a half inches, I'm gonna go about eight and a half inches and add those two inches in. Again, doing my tape measure, going to eight and a half inches, and let's see how I feel about this. So another thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead with this rose and I'm gonna pull off my guard petals. I am infamous for loving guard petals. Uh, but in this design, I feel like the guard petals just aren't necessary. I'm not going for gardeny look, I'm going for a cleaner look. So let's try it with our eight and a half inch rose and see how we feel. Oh yes, that is my sweet spot right there. Eight and a half inches with my leaves removed and my guard petals removed is exactly what I'm going for. Sometimes what you think you wanna do and what you really wanna do are two different things. And as a designer, we get the opportunity to make those changes on the fly when we see them. You know. I always say I'm not good at following directions. I'm a terrible baker because I don't like to put the exact amount of anything in. And that's part of being creative. So if you find that there's something different you wanna do or a different style you wanna do, using your inspiration, go for it. But if you're baking a cake, maybe follow the directions or that thing will not work out. Trust me, I've done it many times. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna keep rolling in this row all the way around. Let's watch it happen. All right, we've got through our first single layer. And if you saw, I went through very quickly and just processed the roses the way I wanted to work with them, which made my life a lot easier because once all the greens were stripped off and the guard petals were taken off, then it was just a matter of placing my blooms into my beautiful hat box. And now the, well, not so tricky, tricky part comes in. Now we're gonna fill the center. The reason I say it's not so tricky, tricky part is because roses aren't always the exact same size. So getting this to really have a nice flush look can be a little bit of a challenge. When I'm looking at the roses, I'm looking for roses in a mix of shapes and sizes that I can place together. So see, this one's really big and a little bit fuller. This one's a little smaller and tighter, but when they're placed together, these are gonna look really nice. So I definitely wanna bring these two in. Oops, I'm gonna give them a cut right together. Let's place them in. Oh my gosh, I love these boxes and I love the color of these roses. I gotta say, every time I get roses from Jet Fresh, I am more and more excited. They are beautiful. 
Here's another small one. That's gonna be great, because you can see here, I have a little bit of a triangular section. So let's try that. This right here, I'm gonna put the small rows next to that big, large rows that I showed you. And also, get a little tight on space for your hand. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna put one more rose in here. Challenge with this one more rose. All right, well, the challenge with all of these one more roses, uh, and this is something that happens with lighter colored roses. This is not a big deal. Uh, you get a lot of uh, the browning on the outer petals. This does happen with all of your light colored roses. It's usually a couple roses in the box that you will see a little damage. I'm not worried about them. I set them to the side. I either use them deep and in, in larger arrangements or I'll petal them. Uh, but we are not gonna put you in this beautiful box just because that's not what your life was intended for. Let's put these guys to the side. Now I need to find a perfect, oh, look at this one. Look at that. Oh, I feel bad even taking those guard petals off. They're so beautiful, but you gotta go. So goodbye leaves, goodbye guard petals. This rose just got selected as the final rose. Ooh, like the bachelor, the final rose. All right, that's enough TV talk. Here we go. Now what's challenging here is I have to not smush these roses. I have to get it into that foam deep enough so that it will hydrate and I have to push very slowly. So I'm holding just on the bulbous portion and I'm pushing very slowly. I can no longer reach the stem. If I hold the petals, there we go. If I hold the petals, then I will bruise them. I really don't wanna do that. And you see how it's still sticking up just a little too tall? So I'm gonna to try to go in from the side, Just move these apart and do my best. There we go, to get that pushed down. So as I'm doing this, I'm feeling like I have a little bit of a, a knot roundness over here on this side. So I'm just gonna kind of twist and adjust and move until I get to that comfort zone. Look at that, it's so ridiculously beautiful. Can you imagine this showing up at your door for Valentine's Day, your birthday, Mother's Day, or maybe on wedding day, early in the morning when you're getting your makeup done? This is beautiful. And with these boxes coming in three sizes, you have upgrade options that you can give to your clients. It's a very, very simple design. And as you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot of product. The small box takes just over a dozen roses. So if a client's ordering a dozen, I think it's always fine to throw in a little extra. So we've got 14 beautiful lavender roses here. All right, I know your next question is, well, you know where to get the roses. Jet Fresh has incredible roses. But do you know where to get these boxes? Because I get messages all the time asking about hat boxes. Guys, these are from Amazon. They ship directly to my studio, directly to my workshop, directly to wherever I am around the country. They're sturdy, they're great, and I'll make sure I include a link so you can order them. They're really inexpensive, and I love working with these. We're not quite finished yet, though. Every gift needs a pretty little bow, right? So this is beautiful. This is lion ribbon. It's this great double-sided satin. And oh, looks like that's the end of my roll, but that's fine, because that's all I need. I'm just gonna cut this piece of tape off here. I always do like to pinch the ends of my ribbon. Some people love this, others not so much. I think it's adorable. So to do this, I'm just going to take my ribbon side by side. I'm going to fold it and then cut it. And it's gonna give me a nice little tail at the end. That is how I like my ribbon. So then I'm gonna take my Ooglu, Ooglu dashes, which are really great. You can get these from your local wholesale. You can get these from Amazon too, actually. Uh, I always get them from my wholesaler or I get them directly from Oasis. Take a dot of your Ooglu. I'm gonna put the dot of the Ooglu on the back. That's gonna make sure that this ribbon stays in place. So I'm gonna make sure I have nice, even lengths. I'm gonna go under my carry ribbon. I'm just gonna finish it around. I'm gonna come back to the front. 
When I come back to the front, I'm gonna put another dot of my Ooglu. So again, that ribbon stays up there for me. These boxes are beautiful, but that ribbon will slide. So then I'm just gonna tie, Let's see if I can tie this backwards. A very simple bow. Very simple. So I like a loose, more casual bow. Let's get this straightened out. Kind of like, I just imagine like a big bow on the side of a dress for a Sunday brunch, soft and a little floppy. And there you go. Isn't that beautiful? You can even include the lid on this if you want to add that as well. When I'm including the lid, <laughs> it's not trash guys. This is a fun little trick. We can pop in one of our rose stems and we can get that lid to just hang out just on the rose stem so it's nice and open. A touch of oogloo is all it's gonna take if you wanna have the lid there too.